So I, uh, like I said, I'm a relative newbie at R, and also ggplot is is huge, and there's a million things you can do with it. So I've played around with ggplot, but I have barely scratched the surface. So, um, and I've been to several workshops on ggplot, and Kate Brady, uh, who's a recent PhD graduate, did a really fantastic talk. Um, the data uh, I think it was the Data Science Institute sponsored a um, workshop last spring. And so I actually went back and looked at her, that the R script she used and realized, oh, she was using the same Nashville schools data set that we've already been playing around with. So I decided that that was actually, a, a, using her code as a starting place was actually a great way to um, <clears throat> to introduce ggplot because it's with a data set that we're already familiar with. So um, thanks to her for um, making her code available publicly. And there is a link in the beginning of this week's R script to her GitHub repo if you want to see the original code. Um, it was in an, a Jupyter notebook, so which you can't run directly in R Studio, but the script that I've given you, you can just copy and paste into your R Studio. Um, so I also wanted to take just a minute to mention that although this is the last week, um, we kind of lagged behind a little bit. And so um, I'm going to actually hold another optional session next week, which will not introduce any new content but um, I mentioned this National Longitudinal Study of Adolescent to Adult Health um, that, that some of you downloaded and then we didn't really have time to play with it. So there's uh, an exercise of working through that data, which I think um, actually is a good opportunity to sort of solidify some of the different kinds of things we did, especially the more complicated data wrangling stuff. And there's also um, some visualization ggplot in there as well. So um, if you're interested and you want to join, we'll meet one more time next week in a, as an optional add-on uh, session, same time as, this, as the other sessions and also the same Zoom URL. So um, I mentioned when, I, when we started off that, um, that data visualization and a ggplot are just huge you could have a whole series just on ggplot itself. So there's no possible way in 50 minutes that we can do anything more than just scratch the surface. But I have two resources that I highly recommend um, if you are particularly interested in data visualization that you check out. Um, the first one is chapter three of R for data science. This is great because it's available just on the open web and there's a link at the top of the lesson script that will jump you straight to the data visualization chapter. So if after the lesson today you want to sort of work through a different lesson by a different person, I would recommend that you just go through um, this chapter in, in this book. And this is actually Hadley Wickham's book. So I mentioned that he's famous in the R community, first of all, as the main developer of R Studio, but also he's basically the guy who invented ggplot. And he, he came up with sort of the conceptual idea behind it, which is what we'll start off with in just a minute. The other thing, and this is, I just think, incredibly helpful, there is a data visualization with ggplot cheat sheet, and I put the link to that. Um, so, you know, once you sort of, learn how to do the basic construction of a visualization with ggplot, then the next question is, well, how do I make a plot that is of the sort that I want? And the answer is, go to this cheat sheet and look at all of the different example plots. And then when you find out the one that you want to try to do, you can Google, how do I do a geom qq plot or whatever it is on google and then you can find the details of how to set up uh, the various arguments so i highly recommend this and we'll talk about this part over the basics part over here on the left in just a minute so these are all the different types of charts and then there are a lot of other things that we aren't even going to get into today like 
changing the coordinate system, using facets, adding labels and themes. These are all uh, additional um, icing on top of the cake. The other thing which is uh, more uh, important, but we also, in the interest of time, aren't going to get into, is integrating statistics of various sorts into your plot and also um, controlling things like color and so on. So anyway, uh, you know, once you sort of get your, wrap your head around the basics of how you construct a ggplot plot, then this is really your go-to thing, I believe, for um, taking the next step. So uh, I highly recommend those two things. So what I wanted to do is to start off with this thing called the grammar of graphics. And if you're wondering why ggplot is called ggplot, the gg stands for grammar of graphics. And the grammar of graphics is actually a uh, sort of a, a philosophy or a, um, a, a way of thinking about visualization and graphics. And this um, was put together by Hadley Wickham in a paper. And in the R script for today, if you go to the R for data science um, link, at the very beginning of it, there's also a link to this paper that he wrote, um, which is called a, The Layered Grammar of Graphics. And so if you are like thinking, wow, I just want to be a data viz um, guru, then that's sort of a must read paper in terms of, of providing sort of the conceptual framework of, of this idea of a grammar of graphics. So again, we're just going to touch the surface of this. You could have a whole uh, class on this. Um, but the idea is that if you want to make a visualization and make it look the way that you want it to look, there is a limited set of different characteristics of that, gra of that of visualization that you can control independently. And so the most important of these three and the ones that we're going to use the most is the data, the geometry, and the aesthetics. So the data obviously is the underlying data set that you're going to try to visualize. Um, and the geometry is sort of the type and shape of the graph. So for example, do you want a bar chart? Do you want a scatter plot? Do you want a line plot? These are all things relating to the geometry. And when we um, were doing sort of these simplistic canned plots that come built into R, um, there was actually like separate functions for each one of these types of graphs. But in ggplot, there's just one function and the geometry or the type of graph that you're going to do is actually one of the arguments that you set in that ggplot function. And then the third really important aspect of the graphic is the aesthetics. And so these are the things that you can control about the graph that make, uh, that highlight or make more apparent the patterns that you want to see inside your visualization. So things like color, things like uh, what kind of markers you use, what kind of things you do to control the size of the markers, anything that controls the visual aspects of the visualization is the aesthetic. And um, so really learning how to master the aesthetics, uh, well, learning how to select the best and most appropriate geometry for the kind of visualization you want to do, and then how to control the aesthetics to make the patterns that you want people to see apparent. These are really uh, the, the skills that makes one a master at, um, at doing data visualization. And uh, again, I am not by any stretch of the imagination a master. And, and I think one of the ways to get better is to just do, make a lot of graphs. So um, hopefully with, the, with this introduction, you'll be able to sort of go on your own and play around with um, different kinds of visualizations that you can make with ggplot. There are also a number of other optional aspects of the visualization. Um, I mentioned when we were looking at that cheat sheet that 
uh, ggplot has the ability to carry out st various st sorts of statistics on the data, the underlying data, before it's piped into the visualization. So there's a stat component. You can also change the scale. So like instead of a linear scale, you could have a logarithmic scale. Um, and also faceting is possible. So if you want your visualization to have multiple plots on the same um, screen, you can create facets of side-by-side -side plots and things like that. You can change the coordinate system if you need to do something like polar coordinates. And then there are also built-in themes like color schemes and things like that. So these are, again, um, perhaps you could call them the icing that goes on top of the basic three-layer cake that is data, geometry, and aesthetics. So let's um, look, think, look at this a different way, a sort of a visual way. So if you think about, um, so the basic idea behind this grammar of graphics is that you have your data set, and then the geometry is essentially, uh, I don't know if you want to call it like a projection or a transformation of the data where you decide how, what form you want that data, data to take. So deciding things like, what do you want to be X? What do you want to be Y? Um, is this, uh, if it's only an X, do I want to use bars or do I want to use uh, box and whiskers? So these sort of transformation of the raw data into the actual structure um, is the, sort of this arrow that I put up here in this little shorthand. And then you take that and you basically overlay it on top of a coordinate system, and that's what you end up um, with as your plot. And then, as I mentioned, the other aspect of the um, visualization is controlling the aesthetics. So when you're creating the geometry, not only are you deciding how, how to spatially uh, place the data in terms of the plot itself, but also controlling the visualization things. So like, do you want to make the dots bigger? Or do you want to use like a color ramp? Or do you want to use a certain set of colors or something like that? And once you control those things, then you can see that your plot becomes more meaningful um, by your control of the aesthetics. The other thing that is easy to do in ggplot is to build layers on top of the same plot. So once you have create, once you've taken data and uh, you know, sort of mapped it onto a geometry with its associated aesthetics and plopped it on a coordinate system, you could do that again and plop that on the coordinate system, and you can do it again and plop that on the coordinate system. So you can end up building up layers that show different sorts of things that you want to put on top. So for example, you might have like some colored dots, but you might want to have a contour plot overlaid over the top of that. And each of those two things, the contour plot and the dot plot could be controlled as separate layers with their own geometries and aesthetics. So that, those are sort of the basic conceptual ideas of how you take these different pieces and put them together in a plot. So the next thing we should do is take a look at how this um, is reflected in the, um, the actual structure of the ggplot command. So ggplot is a function, and you know the name of the function is ggplot. So as I said, unlike the other visualizations that we've done that each had a different name, there's just one function, basically ggplot. And ggplot is always going to have um, as a uh, parameter the uh, the data that uh, the data set that you are going to assign to that plot, and then you add on to that different uh, of these uh, layers. And as I said in the last slide, um, you basically take uh, choose the geom that you want the the geometric representation, and then you map the data onto that using aesthetics that uh, have different kinds of um, arguments. So you 
you put the arguments in the ascetics function that's inside the geom function and that controls the different things like the color and the size and so on. So that basically says how you're going to do the mapping of the data into the geom. And that piece, that this first piece here, ggplot plus the geom function, is the basic um, thing that's required to do a ggplot. All of these other things that I mentioned, themes and scales and facets and coordinate systems and stats, those are all add-ons that you can add if you choose. But as this says over on the right here, you're not required to do any of this fancy stuff. Um, you can just, uh, it, it will come up with sensible defaults if you leave them out. So um, here is uh, an example of a plot um, where you have uh, applied an aesthetic um, that you are going to then uh, to a, uh, some data which you then can add additional geom layers on top of it. So uh, that's kind of the, the basics, uh, the basic background. And so what we're basically going to do for the rest of the class is to um, go to the school's data set that we have looked at before. And um, we'll see some of the familiar things that we have. Um, oh, I forgot to enlarge my ggplot. Give me a second here. OK. Um, so we're going to sort of walk through the script here and take it slowly at first. Um, the script is kind of fun because uh, it has uh, a lot of things are commented out in the script. And so what you can do is you can basically rerun the script. And each time you rerun it, you can uncomment different uh, parts of the, of the scripts and see what effect the commented out part has when you add it into the plot. Okay, so um, first of all, there's a few preliminaries here. So I mentioned in the uh, email that I sent out that um, you may have to install some of these libraries here. So um, I don't know, uh, it, did, did you all have a chance to, um, to do this ahead of time or should we pause for a minute and let people do that? Do you know by any chance that last one, the REPR, is that included in Tidyverse? Because mine can't find it anywhere. Yeah, so I think it's not included in Tidyverse. But what you can do, if you go to the package manager and click on the install tab, then you can just type in uh, REPR and select that. Um, I'm not going to do this because I actually already installed it myself. Um, you can also, if you, uh, oops, sorry, uh, no, can't do that. Uh, if you just go into the package manager and type REPR, you can see that I have it because I already installed it. But if you type REPR and you don't have it, then you'll need to, to do an installation on it. Perfect. That worked. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, let's, so I'm not going to really uh, belabor any of this. Basically, all you need to do is just run this. And, and the REPR is basically going to set some of the, um, the uh, uh, default size for the plots that are going to show up in the plot window down here. So I'll go ahead and run that. And then here is a, some, a couple commands that should be familiar to you from the previous lesson. So first of all, we're going to read in the school's data, which we've played with a number of times. You can see here it is looking just like it did in the other lessons. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, um, there are some issues with the data. The foremost one being that there's no place that has the total number of students per school. And as we talked about before, like if you want to know what fraction of the students fall into different categories, you need to know this. Um, so this is going to basically create a column in the school's uh, data that is um, the, the sum of males and females. 
And then the other thing which we also talked about before is that the school's uh, zip codes actually should be a factor. They should not be just a string because a zip code is like a way of categorizing things and that's exactly what factors are for. So let's go ahead and run that and then also turn the zip codes into factors. Now there are a, a bunch of school levels and those also we want to turn into factors because that is another way that we're going to categorize the schools. But before we turn them into factors generically, like I did with the zip code, if we create a vector of, that has all of the categories, then it will uh, order them in the order that they are found in this vector. So there's a little add-on to the factor thing here where you specify the level, the order of the levels by calling in this vector that we created here. So we'll just go ahead and run that, and then we'll run this. Um, so now if we do head, that's just an, altern an alternative way to sort of look at the data set and see what we have here. So when we created this, um, this uh, ordering of the factors, um, that didn't really uh, change anything uh, in this table here. Uh, well, no, I guess it did actually, never mind. <laughs> um, if you look at the end here though, you'll see here is that total column that wasn't there before that we created. And uh, let's see, yeah, the school level, it doesn't look like it changed any because it will display factors the same way as it displays strings. But if we did the str function, we should see that it's been turned into a factor. Uh, but we can skip that for now. Okay, so <clears throat> that's all we need to do to basically get the data that we want. Now, the next step then is to um, take, is to basically collect together those three important characteristics of the plot that we want. And as I said before, it's uh, the data, the geometry, and the aesthetics. And so the data, I'm simply at this point just going to use all of the school's data, but later on we'll try doing it by limiting it only to the larger schools by uncommenting this. Um, and then uh, we, we want, there's a, a kind of important thing that we want to know about the schools, and that is how many there, there are um, in different categories. <clears throat> And so uh, we're going, in order to do this um, bar chart geometry, we are going to specify that the count is a statistic that we're going to use. And then when we set the aesthetic here, we are saying that we want to use the school level, which we have turned into a factor, as basically as the way that we do the categorization. So we want it to be X. We want to categorize it and, and the, uh, the thing that we're doing when we create the geometry is counts of the school. Um, so those are all things that we're going to do in the basic plot setup. So let's go ahead and run that and run that and run that. And now we go ahead and run ggplot and uh, plot uh, and uh, and then we can first create it um, with only the data and the aesthetics. And then as we, when we do that, we'll see, okay, that really didn't produce anything interesting because we never told it what geometry to use. So if we go in the next step here and we, tell, and we add in the geometry, now we see that um, the, the, the bar chart that we specified, a bar chart with counts, is what shows up. Um, and then there's, we can add an additional um, uh, plot on a layer on top of this <clears throat> by doing a point plot. <clears throat> so if we do that, then we get points at the end of each of those. And then finally, <clears throat> there's an additional function we can do that will flip the coordinates. So one of the things that you see that's pretty icky about the plot the way it is here is how all of the um, 
names of the schools overlap with each other. But if we flip the axes around like this, then our labels don't get dumped on top of each other and we end up with something like that. It's still a pretty busy plot because we have a lot of schools that are like small. There aren't, like I think maybe there's only one school that's a gate center uh, and a, one or a few adult education schools. So if we want to make the, this more apparent on only the significant um, size schools, we can go back here and uncomment this and essentially apply a filter to the school's data when we read it in, which is to say we're only going to use schools where this total column that we created is greater than 300. So um, if I run that and then go back and do this last plot again, we can see that I've simplified the school by taking out those categories that only have one or two schools in them. Okay, this is like great. We, we successfully used ggplot to make a plot, but it's not really that great of a plot because we are not taking advantage of the aesthetics that we could to make this plot be really easy to see. So let's go ahead and, um, and try another plot here. So again, we're gonna go back uh, and pull in the school's data. This time we're going to add an aesthetics, which is, um, or, or change the aesthetics, which is to fill in the X bar based on the school levels, um, and then go ahead and do a histogram of those. So if we do that and then run the plot, we get actually a very cool, um, with, with a pretty simple command, we get a very cool graph that basically shows the breakdown by um, uh, the number of schools and size. So this is how many schools there are of different numbers of students, but it's broken down by kind of school. So we can see very clearly here from this graph that, that the big schools in Nashville are high schools and that the elementary and middle schools are smaller. They uh, are all under like 900 students. Okay, so um, we, we can take the same, uh, oh, and also if we want to apply this filter here, um, and that filter is only going to do charter schools, middle schools, and elementary schools. So let's go ahead and try that. Where did my run button go? There. Okay, and then go down and run the plot. All right, it's a, it's a little less busy of a plot and we can actually see the blocks better on there. Um, and then there is another option here to change the geometry to a dot plot, which is not really that great, but if you want to see what an alternative looks like, um, I guess that's cool. Because one of the problems that we had in our, in our previous plot was that um, these uh, bars sort of laid on top of each other and so in the parts in the bottom it was a little hard to see how these things fell out but in the dot plot you can actually see by the stack of the plots the exact numbers that fall into each, or the relative numbers that fall into each of the categories okay so uh that was kind of a, a whirlwind there does anybody uh have any questions or anything they want to talk about um from what we've tried here so far. Okay, if not, we'll just go ahead and try uh, some other types of plots. So we're gonna basically do the same plot and let's go ahead and, and simplify it by um, limiting it only to those four types of school. 
But this time, the geometry that we're going to cho choose is a box plot, actually a box and whisker plot. Oops, sorry. Um, and then, um, so here's the box and whisker plot and with the coordinates flipped. And if we want, we can try uh, doing some different variations on this. So here we've um, added in a lot of uh, dots. Here we've color uh, created the color by uh, putting a blue mean on top of it. And, <clears throat> and here we've put in a red median. So this is kind of another way to um, sort of br bring out or use the, um, the uh, aesthetics to make it easier to see um, how this looks. And each of these things that we've added on here is basically another layer that we've added on top of the basic plot. Okay, so I think I have, uh, I put this in the wrong place. It should have been starting here. So now let's try doing a different kind of plot um, by grade and size of the school, but with the, um, the uh, level of the school as a color. And this is, uh, uses some of the fancier um, things which I, uh, sort of what we were talking about in the beginning. So here is a, um, using this, this, um, this L apply function that we talked about a little bit before. So it's essentially going to go through in a, and apply a bunch of filtering functions through all of the columns um, one at a time. So let's try that. Um, and then we're going to create, so, so this is a, a, applying something to a bunch of different things. And then here we're defining a function, our own function that creates new uh, rows in the table. And then we're doing uh, some reduction and some ordering. And so what we've ended up with is basically a new uh, data frame, a new tibble called grade info that is simplified and based on the, um, the things that, uh, the uh, transformations that we did on the data. So let's, add some aesthetics and also um, make it be a bar chart. And here is what the plot looks like. So here we have um, basically sorted them out by grade level, um, but now showing the different school types as different uh, parts of the bars in different colors. So um, this is a, basically an example of doing a lot of complicated data munging or data wrangling on the data before you create your plot. And uh, re obviously requires knowing how to do those, uh, those functions in that wrangling. But it gives you a feel for uh, how you can take a basic data set and transform it into other sorts of data that, um, that show the information that you want. We're going to end today's lesson with using R to put some data on a map. So uh, you may recall that our school's data had a column in it towards the end that had the latitude and longitude of each school. And we didn't really make use of that, of those data. But we're going to do that now by creating points and placing them on top of a map. So because R doesn't really have like the same kind of built-in uh, 
tools for working with maps that GIS software does. We have to do some things to the map image in order to, um, to be able to plot the points on top of it. The image itself is, uh, let's see, where did it go? The image itself is just a PNG file that is, uh, looks like it's copied from Google Maps. So all we are gonna do is um, overlay the data on top of that um, fixed image. So the first thing that we have to do in order to be able to do that is to um, basically take that map image and turn it into what's called a raster. So um, we're basically creating a grid of X, Y points based on the school's uh, latitude and longitude and taking the maximum and minimum latitude and longitudes and then saying that those are the bounds of the map. And so what we end up with sort of is sort of a grid of points that represent all the X and Y values and, uh, and we've connected that to the map image. So once we've done that, then we're able to put points on top of it. So we're gonna restrict the uh, data that's in this uh, data set to just high schools. And um, the aesthetic we're going to set up with really uh, very little details other than that we're gonna use latitude as Y and longitude for X. So let's go ahead and do that. So load in the map, uh, load the school's data into the data frame. And then when we make the plot, right now we don't have anything on it except just the axes. So if we want to actually see the points, we have to add that uh, as a layer. So let's run that again. Forgot to uncomment that. There we go. All right, so now we see the points plotted as latitude and longitude as big red dots. However, we don't have the map. So if we uncomment these two lines, then we can create the map with fixed coordinates and plot the points on top of it. So now we uh, have a map that shows us the locations of all the high schools in Nashville. And we can also add a title to it like this. So if we run that again, we get the same thing, except this time we get the title where Nashville goes to school. So that's kind of nice, that's pretty basic. But if we wanna really make this uh, better, it'd be nice to be able to uh, see more characteristics in just where the high schools are. So for example, what if we wanted to see the high school and the elementary schools. And we could also show other features like how many students are in the school and um, what the fraction of white students are in the school. And so we can do, we can create a more complicated map um, like this. So the first thing that I'm doing is instead of only looking at high schools, I'm looking at elementary, middle, and high schools. And uh, I'm going to sh have the shape of those markers being determined by the kind of school it is. Then in this, also adding to the aesthetic besides the X and Y, I can also say that I want the color to be represented by the fraction of students that are white. And then the size of the markers will be bigger if the schools themselves have more students in them. And just to recall in the data, there are uh, 
these are the different categories. So if we wanted to use a category other than white, we could just substitute that in the formula up here. So let's go ahead and try uh, load the data, set up the aesthetic. Now I'm going to do the plot. Obviously, if I don't do anything except uh, if I don't put the points in, I won't see anything. So let's run that first. OK, so now I can see that um, it is making the dots larger for the larger schools and smaller for the smaller schools and changing the shape based on the kind of school. Uh, but there's a couple this color ramp isn't really that good. So I can select my own color gradient um, where it ranges from blue for low to high for red. That's a little bit easier to tell what's going on. Um, and then if I want to overlay this on top of the map, I can uncomment these two things here. Now I see where the points are located on the map. And finally, I can add the title. And I have a map showing me some things about how segregated Nashville is. Make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, so I could, uh, instead of doing a fraction of students that are white, I could go back and change this if I wanted to know, let's say, Hispanics and Latinos. I can just change this. and rerun. And here, let's see. There we go. Now we can see the area down around Nolan's Mill Road is and up in Madison are relatively high numbers of Latinos, as we would expect. 